Ayadatan Babadoye is a Southern Voices African Research Scholar with the Wilson Center's Africa Program. He's also a research officer at the African Technology Policy Studies Network in Kenya. And he joins us to discuss STEM education and its implications for the future of Africa. So STEM education, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. W what is your vision of why this is critical in any discussion of Africa's future? Science, technology, science, technology engineering, and mathematics that they call STEM is the bedrock of science, technology, and innovation in the world. And today, as the world moves from a natural resource-based economy to a knowledge-based and innovation-driven economy, Africa cannot be left behind. Mm -hmm. Africa is still developing on raw materials to fund its economy. And that is not sustainable. For us to move from that to, know, to knowledge base, then we have to develop our science, technology, and engineering and mathematics courses. So comparing the need to the actual situation on the ground, uh, how much distance is there to travel? Is this in its preliminary stages, or are there countries in Africa that are moving forward pretty quickly? When we look at Africa as a continent, we, still, we are still relatively behind compared to other parts of the world. Today, Africa still have about less than 1% research output mm. compared to other parts of the world. Africa still invests about 0.4% of its GDP on research and development when other countries are investing about 3 to 3.5%. So relatively, Africa is a continent, Africa is still behind. But we have some countries like Mauritius, we have countries like Kenya, they're already taking the step in the area of science, technology, and innovation and investing over 1% in that area and is already showing in their GDP and is showing in the, in the growth rate of, of countries like that. So let's take a look at Kenya. You're, you're from Nigeria as far as your place of birth, but now you work in Kenya. And, and you mentioned Kenya is one of the countries that's making more progress. What are some of the things that are happening in Kenya that might be uh, models for other countries in Africa? Presently in Kenya, Kenya is really investing in the area of science, technology and innovation. An example is the Konza project, a technology hub that is meant to provide employment for about 300,000 Kenyan youth mm -hmm. where they can explore the area of innovation, the area of technology, and bring ten Kenya to the international scene. Another example is a, is a mobile money transfer in Kenya that they call Impesa. Impesa today is providing jobs for hundreds of, Ken, hundreds, of Ken, hundreds of thousands of Kenyans and is making mobile transfer very easy in the country of Kenya. So for people who are selling goods, they, they have the mobile technology that allows them to? It's very easy. You use your mobile phone, regardless of where you are, whether you are, you are in the rural area or you are in the urban area. You can transfer money in a second just using your mobile phone. And the phone is the key here. We're not, is that, it's not internet access, it's, it's a satellite technology? No, all you need is your phone. Is, so. All you need is your phone. Once you have a phone, and you are connected, you have a network, then you can use Impesa. Ah, so and often, often you hear in, this, in the United States that the United States still trails behind in broadband access compared to some other Western countries. What is the situation in Africa as it relates to broadband access? Today, less than 10 people, less than 10 out of 100, that's one out of 10 people in Africa still have access to internet. Uh -huh. And that, even the access they have is relatively slow compared to other parts of the world. So, Internet access is still a luxury in court in the continent of Africa, but gradually we're improving. Are the barriers largely, uh, are they cultural? Are they economic as far as infrastructure or needs? What, what do you think are the main barriers? Are they philosophical about how to approach education? W what needs to be overcome to accelerate the, the STEM uh, education uh, network? It's, it's, it's a combined issue, and it starts from policy, because for policy is a foundation of, of anything the government wants to do. Mm -hmm. Government has to mainstream science, technology, and innovation and provide policies that will improve and enhance STI, pro STI production in countries. You have a lot of countries in Africa now that doesn't have a solid STI policy already. It is a policy that determines where you want to go, what you want to invest, and how you want to invest. And the culture in Africa too, has not been supporting science, technology, and innovation. Over dependence on natural resources is bringing quick money 
and government is supposed to diversify this money so that it can invest in other areas of the economy, especially in science, technology and innovation, so that the, the government or the economy will open up and move gradually from natural resource, natural resource base to knowledge base and innovation base, which is the foundation of any economy that can give the economy sustainable growth. I, I know another. I'm, excuse me. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to speak over you, the Baba. Another. I know another area you focused on is a gender gap in this regard. Could you talk about that? And that's not an unusual situation in this country as well. Yeah. So people, I'm sure, are familiar with it. But what is the status of the gender gap as it relates to this type of education? Like, like you said, gender gap is a global thing. It's not just in Africa, but Africa has its own peculiar challenges, cultural policy, orientation, environment, all these factors affect Africa as regards to gender. In Africa, it is a general belief that training a woman or training a girl is not that important because they believe it's almost a waste of money because of the stereotype we have in Africa. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to science, technology and innovation, they, it's, it's, it's wider. Because generally they believe that science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is a male-dominated field. So naturally, even in the schools, the curriculum they teach in schools don't encourage girls to go into courses like that. So the gap between the boys and the girls in the area of science, technology, engineering, and mathematics is still relatively wide in the continent of Africa. A final question is about uh, sort of the role of people outside of any particular country. Are, are, is this a problem that needs to be addressed country by country? Or are there potential regional solutions? Or are there roles for the international community, foreign investment, for example? Could that increase the speed of development? I believe involvement of from the state government to the national government, even regional bodies like ECOWAS, the African Union, and even international body like United States, Involvement of all the governments at different levels can improve science, technology, and innovation in Africa. At the national level, like I said, governments should have policies that will drive their STI, their STI agenda and strategy. At the regional level, the regional bodies have agreed or taken consensus on different issues of science, technology, and innovation. They should enforce national governments to implement these consensus so that there will be growth in STI in the continent of Africa. Great. Well, thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure having you here at the Wilson Center. Good much. luck on thank your return. You. Yeah. And thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much.